People think of me as the polling guy, but I'm just a canoeist. Mostly I paddle, and I love to paddle. I'm also lazy. I know that sounds unlikely, but look at me here. I snug over to the side so that I can hold my paddle more vertically. With the hull healed, I can have it carved slightly to my paddling side. Higher cadence and a shorter stroke, along with torso rotation, saves my arms. And these things together help me avoid a lot of heavy correction strokes which slow a boat. If I find myself in wind and waves, being able to hold a straight line while maintaining constant speed with power is critical. When I have to line or wade or portage, I do. But I don't use those three walking options as often as most folks because I also know how to pull. Carpenters don't show up at a job site with just a hammer. They bring a box full of tools and the skills to use them. I want to be just as prepared for this job, which is travel by canoe. So here are a few reasons that you might want to include polling in your skills toolbox. Complicated or dangerous rapids often have a slow, polar-friendly shoreline. That's because they only need to be deep enough for you to float your boat. Standing gives you a higher point of view and a different perspective than a sitting paddler. Ledges and other river features resolve and give up their secrets sooner. The more time you have to react and maneuver, the better your outcome is likely to be. In the pushy water above a ledge, a pole helps you to move sideways without losing much to the downstream current. Oh, okay, maybe the seeing farther ahead is the big takeaway here. Now, there are times when you might just want to slow down to visit with a friend. Other times, you just really want to stop. And then, there's what most people believe is the only reason to use a pole. Going upstream. Well, absolutely. If you want to go that way, a pole can really oblige you. My favorite use for a pole is to access places that, because of depth or their busy rocky nature, can only be paddled during flood times, or maybe not at all. The fact is, a simple pole creates opportunities that are close to the canoeist who only carries a paddle. There are shallow pretty rivers like this one, which is only five minutes from my house. I call it my private river because I'm the only person that can travel on it. So why not prepare yourself with one more option? A pole is pretty versatile. In a pinch, you could paddle with it, both forwards and backwards. And the pole is a premier tool for ferrying across a current to line up with your run. It can give you quick and easy speed control. That is a huge deal when the sun is low and bright and you really can't make out what's ahead of you. The last hour of this stretch I could barely see a thing. So pulling is just another skill to go along with paddling. It's always been part of canoeing, but it has all but disappeared during the last 50 years because of chance changes to the way canoeing has been taught and who's teaching it. So why not help with the return of polling? 
it isn't really hard. And it keeps you in your boat. And a pole can really be handy sometimes when you're putting up a tarp. <laughs> 